Hey everyone, welcome back. So, as you guys might recognize, behind me is Ben Lin's car from Gears and Gasoline. And it's got the 2IR swap. That is this block here sitting in front of me. Um, as some of you guys have seen with some of his videos, he's been struggling with power issues. Those power issues have been going on for a while now and keep digging into it and just could not figure out what was going on. So. On his way back from California, I asked him if he could drop the car off here, and uh, he dropped it off a couple months ago, and I figured I would dig in and finally get to the bottom of it. So, obviously, <laughs> naively, but obviously, the first thing I thought, since I was there for all of this, the only part I wasn't there for is the tuning. So, I assumed the tuning was a problem. And, to be fair, Check, check this out. If you look at this video, and if you look at this video, with the setup reverted to how Kobe liked it, which is here. Let me take, let me take a screenshot out of him and put him right beside me here. Um, check that out. Do you see that timing difference? So that was my first clue that it was the tune. Well, there was a problem with the tune. And that problem, what had happened is when Jermaine had tuned it, he had tuned it for pump gas first, and I had never done an E85 tune. So the tune that I supplied to him, I had set to E85, but not correctly. Um, I had not set the fueling to E85, so he had some problems starting it on E85, and in all the shuffle, there was, there was a mistake that was made. The bass tune was reloaded, so he lost all of the pump gas tuning, and then the problem was resolved, and the E85 was tuned, but there was so much chaos there that nobody realized that the pump side of it was still on a very safe bass tune. So as you can see, it's missing several degrees of timing. I figured, oh, for sure, that's the problem. Um, still, it's short, you know. 40, 50 horsepower. That doesn't seem like that would come from a couple degrees of timing, but you know, whatever, right? That's the only part I wasn't responsible for, so surely that's gotta be the problem. Well, I took it to the dyno, and here's where I got. Yeah, about 190 wheel horsepower. Um, and that is on E85 also, so um, <clears throat> that's, that's still, what, about 40 horsepower short. Um, Obviously, there's still a problem. Now, the weird thing is, at this point, um, we've done compression tests. This thing, uh, depending on which tester you're using, but we've used multiple, um, either 180 or 185 PSI, which is about right for this motor. It's not like there's a factory manual for this configuration, so I, I don't know what a good one should be, but 180, 185 for a 12 and a half to one compression ratio engine seems spot on. Uh, Leak down test, no problems. Um, it returned, you know, about three, three, five percent across the board. Uh, and, and those are very dependent on which tester you're using. So really, you want just a couple percent and you want it to be, more importantly, even across the board and not needing to have to put any oil in there for things to seal up. Um, so that wasn't the problem. Now, what led me to finally pulling this completely out of the engine is after the dyno session, I went ahead and I did the compression test again and I went ahead and threw a boroscope down there. And l let me show you what I found. So if you look at the piston, this is number four here, but they all look like this. It's, it's hard to quantify on camera that these really are not very deep at all. Um, these are actually hitting the exact shape of the recess in the piston. So they did touch, they obviously did touch, and that's bad. So I assumed, okay, well at this point, we must have something wrong internally, right? Because the valves have touched. Um, I don't know why it's not causing leak down issues, but surely there's a problem, so let's take it all apart. Well, I take it all apart. The bores are super clean. It's showing evidence in the number one hole that it may be sat and that was the valves that were open so there's a bit of humidity that got in but really the rust that was in there has been completely removed it's 
down to staining at this point that you can't feel with your fingers. Um, the bearings all look perfect, but let me, uh, let me take you guys to check out the head. So up front here, we've got all the intake valves and we've got all the exhaust valves. Well, look at that. Those valves on the left there, those are number four um, and, and they're actually in order. So the ones on the far right are number one and you can see number four are white. They're, they're ash colored and the number one is a little bit lighter um, and the two and three are, are quite dark because they're just covered in soot. And that would point to a, a very large temperature imbalance. And the way that number four looks is the way that they always come out of these race motors. They're always just white because they've been running so hot uh, that just all the soot just gets cleaned out of them, which is not a bad thing. Um, so obviously at this point, there is an imbalance. There's an imbalance of some kind. But keep in mind, this motor, it idles super smooth. Um, we had seen higher than normal fuel trims, but not nothing to explain why. Well, let's go to the injector tester. Let me show you something. Now, all right, sorry for the poor lighting. This is not really a part of the shop I ever planned on filming in, but we've got cylinder one, two, three, and four. And this is just a cheap injector testing machine, more for basic diagnostics than actual balance flow or anything. I wouldn't use it for that. But check this out. If we idle this injector, we can see all four of them are flowing. And you can see already, um, some of it is because the, well, actually you probably can't see it on camera, but the spray pattern on this one is not quite as nice. So as you can see, and sometimes it does a bit better, sometimes it does a bit worse, but the thing to keep in mind here is it is number four is contributing and it doesn't have to contribute very equally to give a smooth idle. It, it just doesn't, especially on something like E85. Um, the flammability limits on E85 are pretty wide and we are idling it a little bit rich to begin with. So I think this makes sense why we were still seeing an even idle. And you can kind of see something on here, but let me go to a quicker test here. This is where it gets really ugly. And you can also see number one here is contributing less. And remember, this cylinder was also showing signs of running hotter. Yeah, do, do you see that goofy behavior right there? Um, the more the frequency increases, so the RPM increases, the less that injector sprays. And that goes, even if you go to a bigger duty cycle, it's, it, it basically almost shuts down. So for some reason, that number four injector had failed in such a way that it was still providing a smooth idle. And then when you got on the gas, it was, uh, just enough to not sound like a dead hole. Um, I, I can't explain it. In, in hindsight, it seems that, well, not just in hindsight, to you guys, I'm sure, it sounds like there's, there's no way in hell you couldn't hear that. Um, that should have been running rough, but it wasn't. Um, I think it was injecting so little fuel that combustion just wasn't happening in the number four cylinder. Um, there was enough combustion happening to keep this all clean. If we look at the spark plug, you can see, yeah, you can see right here, the spark plug looks, it doesn't look like it got wet. It was running, literally, it was running just enough, just enough to mess with us, um, though at full throttle. And I, I think as a result, you know, this motor, this motor likes to run over 100% volumetric efficiency. But in order to do that, it has to scavenge. Um, and in order to scavenge, you have to have exhaust velocity up. So even though exhaust gases were still coming out, you had significantly less because the chemical reactions hadn't happened. And also it wasn't hot. So you were getting less velocity that was slowing down the whole exhaust, 
probably reducing scavenging to these on top of the fact that especially the two center ones were running super rich um, and number one was also still running rich i think i think that explains everything uh in fact if you take the amount of power we're making and you um you assume that that was just coming from three cylinders and you add the fourth in that even gives us a little bit more power than where i would expect to be so i think <laughs> i think i just disassembled the whole motor for something that would have taken 10 minutes to swap and i already have on the shelf frustrating um, though at the end of the day all that this is going to cost to put back together is a fresh head gasket um, and some rtv so everything else is just labor but let me go ahead and put this back together throw it in the car and um, let's see what it does I really don't know how that motor did not melt down. Um, it didn't gain 25% more power, so that means that fourth cylinder was somewhat contributing. Here's, here's the before and after. You can see we gained 28 wheel horsepower. And if we go look back at the video that Ben made a while back when he started, when he posted about the issues, you can see right here, yeah. <laughs> they had measured a 27 horsepower loss so one horsepower difference i mean it doesn't get much more precise than that the mr2 is back hopefully ben can properly enjoy it this time and uh make some good content for you guys anyways thanks for coming back um i know it's been a little bit since i've posted some videos 2024 has got some interesting things planned for it um there's going to be some 2gr content coming soon but uh i think I think I'm going to do some non-2GR content soon also. Stick around. Maybe you want to subscribe. Who knows what's coming down the pipeline. Could be some pretty interesting stuff. Have a good one.